Hello Nigeria, hello Africa. You're welcome to, welcome to Sports Business with Urufo Ezaga. And you're watching this program live from our studios in Victoria Island, Lagos, and the, and the studio, the station is Plus TV Africa. Today we're going to be talking about basketball and, you know, the events that have happened in, in the last week. And, you know, we're going to be talking about the Nigerian Premier Basketball League that just ended its 2023 and 2024 season just yesterday. If you are surprised, then you should, then, you know, you can be pardoned because um, not a lot of people are aware that, were aware that the league was, was happening. And, you know, um, th that's a bit of a surprise. Why is that? Because basketball is easily the second biggest sport in Nigeria. Why isn't this you know, why isn't there much more to the game than, you know, we find in Nigeria today? If the Nigerian Football League, for instance, is, is, is struggling, all leagues in this country are struggling, but at least, you know, we all know that there's football going on in Nigeria. We should all know that basketball is going on in Nigeria because basketball is popular not just here in Lagos, but across the country, whether it's the north, the south, the east, or the west. And we have produced some very big players, um, basketball players in, 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 uh, you know, in the past and even currently. So the question is, what do we have to do to make basketball a more successful sport in Nigeria? What do we have to do to win the basketball fans that we used to have in, back in the day because basketball was huge? What do we need to do so that we can get you know, the fans back, so that we can get the league thriving and by so doing so that we can you grow commerce around um, the basketball uh, industry. Joining me in the studio to talk about it is a guy who should know, somebody who has done incredibly well, uh, you know, in the game for a long, long time. And also joining via Zoom is another guy who has played the game for a long time and currently he coaches, you know, um, a, a, a very top, um, a top basketball team in this country. Now, I stutter because because of, of because of what um, because I'm struggling to describe the team. It's a university team, and they're playing in the in the Premier Division. All right, so we will be introducing these two guests, you know, shortly when we return. We're going to take a very short break. Oh, we might as well do that now. You know, joining us via Zoom is um, the head coach of basketball at the, uni at the Nile University in Abuja. His name is um, Stanley Gumut, who, has played, who used to play basketball a long time ago. So basically, he has a very long history with, with the game. And in the studio with me is Mr. Engineer Okpemi Babalola, who is the managing director of Weber Engineering Nigerian Nigeria Limited. His company does all sorts of things, um, produces all sorts of things for that help the basketball game to, you know, to, to be played successfully and to thrive in Nigeria. When we return, I'm going to give you a, I'm going to take a break, one minute, as is the nature of this program, so that you can, you know, basically just prepare yourself over the next 40, 45 minutes uh, for what you're going to hear. Um, and, um, you know, as I always say, it could change your, your view about sports business. It could change up your view about sports and open up an opportunity or two for you or your organization. All right? So take it one minute. Don't change the, the station. And when we return, the business begins. You're welcome back to the program Sports Business with Obufo Izaga. And you're watching this program on Plus TV Africa, uh, we're live from our studios here in Victoria Island, Lagos. Now joining me in the studio to talk about basketball, and you know the recently concluded Nigeria Premier Basketball um, League is, is Mr. Okpemi Babalola, the MD of Weber Engineering Nigeria Limited, and they're the ones who do almost everything. They provide you know, all the equipment, they construct courts, they do all sorts, you know, to make sure that the basketball, basketball as a game is alive and well in Nigeria. Welcome to the studio. Thank you very How much. You? Yeah. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. You were in Port Harcourt, yeah? Yes, I was. For the, for the MPBL? Yes. Yeah. 
let's have your impression of what happened. It was a very, it was, the way I understand it, it was a very short, it was a one week Yeah, it was short. Yeah? It was just a one week uh, basketball tournament. Mm. And um, I'd like to first of all, like, I'd like to first of all um, say a big congrats to the um, team that won, the mm. River Supers. Mm. And also, most especially, a big uh, thank you to the management of the team because they were able to put together, you know, this tournament. I mean, the event within a very short period of time and, you know, they really were able to engage, you know, the stakeholders, you know, a lot of people came to watch the game. Uh, virtually all the uh, games were fully, you know, packed. Um, I, I never knew basketball was that popular in Port Harcourt until mm. recently. So again, uh, kudos to them and also um, a, big a big thank you to the Commissioner for Sports, uh, Barista Chris uh, Green, for making available you know, uh, the needful uh, for the team to excel. Okay, so this, this, how did the league work, work this year? I mean, what was the format? They played, um, the Super 8 was the final stage. Are you, what, what happened before the, the Super Yeah, so Super before eight? now, we had uh, the Atlantic and the Savannah conferences. Okay. Uh, they had their own conference um, The Atlantic finals. being the Southern Conference? Yes, yeah, so Savannah is the Northern um, okay. uh, teams, and while the Atlantic comprises of the um, teams majorly in the Southeast, Southwest, and the South-South, mm. um, for which um, Quara Falcons, um, Rivers Upas and um, Police Barton uh, mm. were, were part of uh, these, um, uh, those that qualified. And um, they had a two group you know, um, situation in Port Harcourt whereby uh, the best, you know, two, two from each uh, conference were assigned to each group and um, we had four teams in total in each group and um, you know at the end of the day it was still an all atlantic conference uh, finals Final. between the rivers Upas and uh, the oops and reed which was the second uh, the, the fourth team that qualified from the atlantic uh, conference okay so i'm happy to to hear that you said that there were a lot of people um uh, interested yeah, in Port Harcourt. Yeah. So there must have been some serious promotion yeah, and all yeah. of that. But nationally, you know, um, if you were not really involved with basketball, you know, people, people you wouldn't know about the, 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 the league. Well, not a lot of people know, know, knew well, about well, it. Well, the, 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 the problem is that we don't have enough of these kind of events going on on a regular basis. Mm. So we have, we have 36 states for crying out loud. Mm. You know, um, this is just a one week event in one state of the Federation. So you can imagine uh, having a similar event, you know, twice in a month happening across the Federation would have been a very, very good platform. You know, not necessarily being a, a organized by the MBBF. There are all the, I mean, avenues by which um, events like these can be organized it just um, brings to I mean we just need to take up this challenge you know stakeholders within the sports industry need to take advantage of um, events like these and um, use it to um, build their brands use it to generate um, revenue you know, because there's a lot of money-making opportunity from events like this, you know. But, but who, who, did you have corporate sponsors for the event? To be honest, I don't know how much of... Uh, did you see any MBBF, corporate... No, I event. did not see any. Uh, it yeah. was more of, um, uh, you know, the, the financial burden resting on the host, mm -hmm. you know. And that's to, the state government? Which, yeah, which was River Supers, yeah. yeah. So that, that, that's the way uh, it all kind of appeared, yeah. Mm. It was sponsored, it was, the costs were borne by the, the River State government. Of course, you provide the, 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 yeah. the venue, you provide all the necessary, you know, um, logistics and everything that mm. needs to go into organizing mm. this kind of event. I, I believe they, they had to do that by themselves. You know, again, that, that is why 
look, we are, we are, we're having this episode on basketball, you know, uh, for such a sp popular sport. We, even though domestically we're str struggling, Nigerians yeah. have dis shown that we have, you know, um, the ability to produce the very best talents in the world. You know, yeah. We've had people like Ol Akim Olajuwon and, and so on and so forth. So, as a game as well, it's a very you know, popular game in, with young children, with even across different levels of society, in elementary schools, in um, um, secondary schools, in universities. In fact, there's a university team playing yeah, in, yeah. In, the, in the Premier League. Yeah. You know? So the problem is not that basketball is popular. The problem is not that basketball is accepted. Yeah? So why is it that for so long we have failed to be able to, we have failed to marshal all of the goodwill for the game, all of the, all of the popularity that the game has into one special product that can deliver, you know, um, you so, know good so value thing, for fans? So the thing is, for me, the way I see it, mm. we need to structure basketball events in a way that it is attractive to brands to come on board. Mm. We are not marketing the game enough. We are not making it look attractive enough. And mm. one key aspect of making a game attractive, you know, is infrastructure. You need to provide, you know, very conducive environment. Um, virtually a lot of uh, spectators uh, in Port Harcourt, um were standing throughout the you know uh, tour um, tournament because there was not enough uh, seats. Mm. Okay, we need arenas. We need big, bigger capacity or um, uh, uh, arenas to to host this kind of events. So again, a lot of the burden doesn't really you know lie on the MBBF, but you know um, corporate. You know we need to come into this kind of space, see the opportunities um, that we can. Uh, get from not just basketball sports as a business mm. and then leverage on this to really create that um, um, so-called um, uh, vision which we have in our, in our minds. See, basketball as a game, you know, um, okay, so you, you, I was going to say that, that so, basketball so as let, a game let me, let me, is, let me, is let me high something. Enough, yeah? Now, in 2000 and um, 16, we had a league in Lagos, yeah. it was mm. called ABL, Africa Basketball mm. League. Mm. In 2017, we had CBL, you know, these were private leagues which showcased basketball at another level. Mm. We've never had something similar to that since then. Mm. Now, it will interest you to note that these were the models that the NBB, NBA and the um, FIBA saw what was happening in Nigeria and decided to jump on Africa as a continent to create the BAL. Mm. Because you may be wondering why why Basketball Africa League? Why not Africa Basketball League? It was because mm. ABL, ABL acronym had already been taken away yeah. you know, by the organizers of a, uh, African Basketball League as at 2016. Yeah. Oh. Okay, but here, here's the thing, um, Weber. I think, in a sense, you ans you, you've just answered the question I was going to ask, mm. right? And that's the fact that, you know, there are people who want to do these things, yeah? But here's what I think. They want to do it. They have the ideas. The ideas are not essentially bad. Yeah. But they don't have the proper structures, be it governance, be it financing and, and all, to be able to run a sustainable model. And... What I find, based on what I have seen of this, seen talking to people on this program, is that people have this idea, and then they go to town with it, hoping that they're going to get sponsorship mm. that then you know uh, sustains it. But but that's not going to happen, yeah. Because first sponsorship, usually in the, especially in Nigeria, it's a short term thing. People just maybe they, they like your face today, they give you money to help you. By the time you come back next year, they got, they've gone somewhere else. So sponsorship, you've it's got to... tougher in this economy. Yeah, today. so scratch, but I think, I feel like what we need to do is just 
tear up the rule book and start all over again and do it the way it is done in even the more developed parts of the world. You have an idea, sell it to investors, right? And then they give you funding. And you know, for the next five years, for instance, what come rain or, or, or uh, come rain or uh, high water, uh, you know, this thing is going to run. And then the sponsors know that, look, we're putting our money into something that has, you know, a good plan, a long-term plan, and we're safe doing so. Yeah. Do you understand? So all of these things about, let's, this guy does his own, this guy does his own, that one does his own, it's not going to work for basketball. Football has gotten away with it, but football is getting away with it because of the success of Nigerian players overseas. You know, that success is what, you know, sustains a bit of the, 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 the popularity around football. The success, that success and the success, the, 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 the success the ex, by extension of the Super Eagles. Now with basketball, it, do you, have you come in, have you come, have you seen any plan that, you know, this is what we need to do with basketball to be able to rival football and this is how long it's going to take for us to get there. I don't, I don't know of any um, blueprint, so mm. to say, that has a long-term plan for Nigerian basketball, mm. other than what individuals like my company mm. and a few others mm. have been trying to do in order to make the game more popular and develop the game mm. uh, locally. Uh, however, what I do agree with you on is that these things don't come uh, within a short period of time, mm. you know. You build on a lot of lessons learned, and over the years, you become better, okay? Uh, I'll give you an example. What we do at Web Engineering today, again, like I always like to say, it's not something that just came out of the blue overnight. We have, we've been, you know, um, producing basketball hoops for over 14 African countries up to date. But guess what? This dream actually started 29 years ago. 29 years ago. So we've been doing this uh, for so long and uh, we've been able to learn from our mistakes and, you know, and over, over, over the years we, you know, gained more popularity over the years. Uh, the brand has become uh, more of an household name and um, I think, again, that's what needs to happen in the area of uh, basketball event, um, event space and also how we can engage other stakeholders, uh, basketball lo loving uh, uh, fans and um, people to come together and then we brainstorm and see what other ways we can uh, make this better. So let, me make, let me tell you what, Weber, yeah? You're very close to these powerful people in, 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 in the MBBF and Nigerian basketball, yeah? If you want to make this league happen, yeah? you need to go and sell your idea to an investment bank or a bank or a, a we live in a world now where sovereign wealth funds private equity capital mm -hmm. you know family offices they're they're investing in 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 in, in sports in a big way yeah right so this is not time anymore for us to be doing all of this you do one small thing this one does his own down the, 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 who, the leadership, the the shots? The leadership of the MBBF must now say, you know what, the way to compete with football, you talked about Baal. Yeah. Now, let me say, the way to compete with football, using the Baal example, is to say, what's the difference between what was happening before Baal came on board? Baal has capital. Of course. Baal has gone two or three or four years now Without, I don't think they're making a profit. No, they, I, they haven't. Yeah, I saw a report that they were, you know, they were yeah, badly, yeah. you know, uh, you know. So, but again, but again, has become more popular through them. Absolutely, it takes a bit of time. You've yeah. got to, you've got to, you know, this has to be like the period of the Song Kong cost. You've got to put in money in, yeah. and then run a few years of the game, and then it begins to turn around, and you know. But it is not the MBBF that's doing is going to be able to do that. They don't have the competencies to do that. They've got to hire the right people. I don't care if it's going to an investment bank or going to a bank or going to some uh, whatever. You know, get IMG, get anybody, you know, get them to say, you know what, this is the Nigerian opportunity. It's a huge opportunity, right? But we need funds. You know, we need funds and we need, beyond the funds, you need, 
you need competencies, marketing, you know, um, officiating, all of those kinds of things, you know, yeah. for you to be taken seriously. Do you yeah. see that happening? Yeah. So one interesting thing to note mm. is that the ABL and CBL I mentioned earlier mm. were still leagues that were organized by the people who are partly MBBF um, board members. Mm. So the question we should be asking is why are they not putting in their expertise to make the MBBF, you know, like what they did privately. Mm. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So why, and I believe you've interviewed them before, mm. so why haven't they, you know, bring, uh, brought in these, in the same kind of uh, sponsorship which they do for World Cup qualifiers, you know, we were together, we, we saw what happened at the hotel right yeah during the world cup qualifiers yeah. we've seen them go to play olympics we've seen them go to play uh, tournaments outside of nigeria and they got sponsorship somehow some from somewhere okay why are we not getting that same level of um involvement of sponsors within the local league league okay so i just i i i, I beg to differ on the area of expertise i believe that yeah. we have the right people in uh, MBBF, but mm. it's all about them doing the right thing. Yeah. Okay, so you have the right people and they're struggling to do the right yeah. things. All right. Uh, you know, this happens to, to be um, um, the, the tale of virtually every sports federation in this country. Everybody's struggling. Sometimes I, I wonder whether it has to do with all of these legal, leadership. Um, squabbles that they have. No, I've said it if, before. It's, it's not just basketball. Um, across various sports in this country, people are just there, you know, fighting over nonsense when they should be progressing um, the games that they've been elected or, you know, appointed to, to develop. All right? But let's take a, break, a short break, you know, um, when, so that we can... Um, recalibrate you know <laughs> as a matter of fact this program today was actually supposed to have three guests there, there's Weber with me in the studio there was supposed to be the general manager of of Rivers Hoopers who are the champions of Nigeria but the guy can't make the program because his team won yesterday and in the celebrations he completely lost his voice all right so uh, we're trying we're trying to see if we can get a replacement for him and also joining us, who is, is the Nile University um, team coach, who is right now stuck somewhere in some airport. I think it's at the, the Abuja. Abuja airport. And he's trying to get a, a, a place to, to, um, to join us uh, co more comfortably. All right. So we'll take a very short break. And when we return, the business continues. You're welcome back to the program Sports Business with Uru for Ezaga. You're watching Plus TV Africa, and we're reaching you live from our studios in Lagos. Joining us via Zoom from Abuja, stuck somewhere in the airport in Abuja, is uh, Mr. Stanley Gumot, who is the, uh, head, the, the coach of the Nile University basketball team. His team got to the semifinals. And um, they're just a university team. So that's a very commendable achievement. He himself has played the game, uh, used to play the game a long time ago. Uh, and, and so, yeah, we're going, to, we're going to be hearing from him what he thinks of what we have said so far. Um, and then what, what we're going to be talking about, what his team is doing um, at the level that they're playing in the Nigerian league system. All right. Hello, Stanley. You're welcome to the program. So, so, so I can hear you guys. Okay, no problem. So talk to us. Um, how, how what, what was your assessment of of the of the you know uh, of the league, the just concluded league? You know, um, not a lot of people knew that the league was was happening. You had to be in the basketball community to be really interested in what was going on. Basketball is a huge sport in it's a very popular sport in Nigeria across all levels. So why, why, are you, why are you guys still struggling to make basketball uh, you know, a, a popular game based on which you can then drive commerce around the game? Okay, first of all, I want to say this is a very good platform to showcase all of these stories that we need to do about basketball. Mm. Uh, 
uh, we're done complaining about issues that have not been done or that's what needs to be done and all of that i think it's time for action for us to be able to you know do what we need to do i think the number one thing we need to do is to have a very strong marketing team you know uh, comprising of people who understand what sports business is all about mm. and i think having if, if we put those in place those pieces in place they should be able to know you know the, the stakeholders that will be interested in at least sports dream basketball the least we can do is to ensure that the whole nigeria knows that such a big event is ongoing uh, i think in that regard we have to step it up you know almost immediately because it's not time to complain it's not time to leave place but i feel it is uh, one of those things one of those things that we have to do in order for us to have sports grow in nigeria like i i heard a lot of people are not aware that the finals of the nigerian basketball has been completed and the real superstars emerged champions but it's unfortunate that that didn't happen but again we just need to move forward let's let's first of all have you know a marketing team that understand the business part of the game and then uh we'll go from there okay well let me tell you you know in some like in south africa i mean this is an example that i've come to read that's grown on me i, I really like it uh, in south africa for instance the safa yeah safa has a ceo mm -hmm. all right that drives the business of of football in south africa yeah even the league has a ceo that drives the business you know the business end of the league see today i understand that you have guys who some of them have very solid corporate experience um, in, in the MBBF, you know, very solid, top guys, you know, but sports business yeah. is, is a discipline that requires certain skills that, you know, you might not get in other sectors where probably they worked. Do you understand? So the question is, do you think, for instance, you, you, you could have like a CEO of, of the MBBF can you know, uh, hire a CEO with strong corporate uh, experience um, and then get them to, you know, go, go out there and design these products and, 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 and get them. So, so for me, I believe a, a lot of these kind of um, scenarios and um, structures can be built around um, the MBBF in order for it to achieve a better. Uh, governance and um, sports um, uh, success. Mm. However, um, again, these federations are governed by um, some documents which hardly are ever revised. Mm. You know, they have constitutions Policy. and all of these mm. suggestions will have to be uh, passed by, you know, Congress. the board members or rather the chairman of um, the states associations i want to ask when last did the mbbf organize uh, you know such a gathering of uh, you know uh, stakeholders a congress Con mean? congress no i I'm, i don't know of any congress in the last two years you know these are the loopholes these are the areas that we need to fix first before we can now say, okay, this is my suggestion, this is your suggestion, let's see how we can bring things together and, um, you know, beautify the game. You know, there's no Congress, so where, where am I going to say all this that I know about basketball? Yeah, yeah, but if you, if you have the idea, then you can organize the conferences. I can organize the conference, the president calls the con con Congress. Mm. The president has the, the responsibilities of the Congress, the president to call the Congress. Mm. And when we come to such a gathering, then we can all table all these fantastic ideas. Mm -hmm. Let's see which ones we can start executing. You know, we talked about uh, marketing uh, 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 teams, you know. These are fantastic ideas, you know. Uh, but if we don't even have a setting or a gathering where we can come together as stakeholders from the Type 6 Federation, States of the Federation and talk about this, then I think we'll just continue to waste our time. Okay, Stanley. You say that you're done with the complaints. You know, now is the time for action. How do we move forward? You know, how do we implement the ideas that we like? See, Weber just says, let's have cong a Congress, you know, to table all of the developmental ideas that uh, there might be. How do we get this? Um, how do we move on the ideas that we have? Like your marketing team, for instance, how do we move? 
Okay, uh, you, you, you made a very valid point, which is a uh, sports business is far different from other businesses. Mm. And unless we get, you know, the right pieces of those who understand the business of sports, it might be difficult for us to get to that destination. First of all, you know, we need to come together as a group, like you rightly said, you know, and agree. And then we need to trust someone, regardless of how poorly or how good the person is working. And then we just run it behind him with advice and then the right people to work with. I think with that, it is very easy for us to get it because, I mean, 200 million, over 200 million Nigerians, you know, business people, business mindsets, uh, I think we have them. But it's just for the opportunity to arise that, yes, I'm inviting, you know, the public space to bring in their proposals and to bring in what they feel can move basketball forward. And then also giving them a chance, you know, to, 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 to show the workability of all of these things that they're bringing. We need to just open our arms, you know, so that whoever is in charge will be able to ac accommodate other people so that it doesn't just be, you know, a one-man uh, affair or a, group, a, few, a few people uh, dealing with the very good school like basketball. I think with that, we should be able to go places. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, no, I, th I find that quite um, instructive. B but to you now, um, Weber, to get this thing to happen, yeah, you know, I think, look, I, I like to think about solutions for, for specific scenarios. Do you understand? You know, I, I don't think you can, you can, you can copy, you, you should just copy and paste. No. Do you understand? No. So You have to copy, edit, and paste. Thank you. So, in Nigeria, what would work? Because I see that a lot of these federations, the big ones especially, the basketballs, footballs, and athletics, and because of the, the, the politics involved in the system, maybe there's a time for us now to separate the politics from the commerce, right? So you guys play the politics, and then let the commerce happen. Do you understand? Um, so like if you had maybe like a CEO, or maybe you had a, 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 a committee within yeah. the MBBF that's structured in such a way that they don't have to deal with the politics of the MBBF and their focus is just basically on, you know what, we have a league to run, we have a league to build, let's build that, we have some cup competitions to act, add, let's build that irrespective of what's going on. And then, you know, um, you know maybe we report under the new structure maybe to the NSC. Uh, of Sheo Diko or something. You know, what we need to do something different. You know, we can't keep doing... For, for me, I think so. it all starts with transparency. Okay. And um, it has to start from the top. Mm. If, if all that goes on within the MBBF is made known to everybody in terms of what funds come from where and how much and what we're using them for, and then we'll be able to say, okay, what about if we do this? What about um, this is too little? We should step it up by a uh, hundredfold. Okay. So take for instance, you're mentioning the idea of having a structure around and uh, a CFO or a CEO a kind of scenario structure. All of this also needs to go into the constitution, and you know some people will ratify it, and it becomes uh, binding. Mm. Otherwise, we. Mm have a situation whereby somebody or a group of people starts with kicks off this kind of idea and some people take them to court to say no this is not within the constitution yeah, yeah, and that yeah. will linger on for another four years yeah so yeah. we need to all come together under the umbrella of a comfortable um, uh, congress. congress and then we talk about all these issues we used to have this in the past in the last couple of years this has never happened and by, by, by the constitution, this should even be happening up, like uh, every year, you know? Mm. So it's, um, we're begging the leadership of the MBBF to do something about this. And then we can all come together, talk about all these fantastic ideas. Mm. It will interest you to know that basketball players are amongst the most educated sportsmen in this country. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Stanley Gumut uh, and I, you know, were in the universities uh, about the same time. We used to uh, uh, um, go for fast, uh, FISU, uh, uh, I mean, uh, camps, I, I remember very well, in Zaria, yeah. you know, and so many other uh, coaches like uh, himself, Ogo, Daudu, you, you name them. We are very, very educated, you understand? Yeah. And we have 
brilliant ideas. We, some of us have been in this game for over 30 years, you know. Yeah. And we even have senior ones, those who are even in diaspora, okay, who are willing, who want to lend the voice, who also want to make impact, yeah. you know. Who, we talk every day about Nigerians in diaspora or Nigerian uh, NBA players of Nigerian origin who have, you know, investments, you know, in other things, but they don't do basketball. They don't do basketball Excellent in Nigeria. point. Excellent. You, point. you understand? Do you think it would be a difficult thing for Adeto, the likes of Adeto Kumba to bring in Nike into uh, uh, basketball in Nigeria, mm -hmm. or we have the great Akim Olajuwon? You know, we have Masai Ujiri. You know, these are people who command you know, authority in basketball in other countries, and yet we are, you know, having this kind of uh, scenarios, one week tournament in Nigeria. Yeah. It's really sad. It, re it is really sad. Yeah. Uh, so w let's go back to Stanley. Stanley, I hope you are still with us. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still here. Okay, so you've heard this thing, you've heard what he has said. Wow, so many of them, several clubs. <laughs> okay, just, okay, just give me I, two clubs that. Play, give me two clubs that you played for. Uh, I played for Carlo Piras, played for Union Bank, played for Latu Peaks, played for Yellow Hawks, played for Bauchi Nets. Okay, okay, okay. Played for Niger Potters. Okay, I know, okay. I know. Okay, let me tell you why. <laughs> let me tell you why I'm asking. I'm asking because. Okay, why are you asking? You know, unlike in football, right? I, I, yes. I, I tend to, I tend to want, I tend to feel that you know there are no strong i feel not i tend to i feel that there are no strong brands in basketball strong enduring brands in basketball like football you have rangers that's been there since 1970 you have um Bendel insurance has been there since 1972 icc has been there since the early 70s do you get what teams do you have in the nigerian basketball league that are still there till now do you understand um, because if yeah. you have that, then you carry them with their fans and, you know, I mean, you, there's sustainability, so to speak, if, on the branding yeah. score. You, you know what, do you have any such uh, clubs that are still around today? Do you think that's a problem with the league? Yes, I think uh, the problem is the sponsorship for these clubs. These clubs have been around for, for, for decades. They, they are still there. No, they're not as functional as they used to be. Mm. You know, the Plateau Peaks is still there. The uh, Cano Pillars are still there. Comets, Abel Comets is still there for, for a very long time. Just to mention, Quara Falcons, you know, even the Rivers Hoopers have been around for a while. So I think most of those clubs are still there. The issue here is, you know, the, the, the point of uh, sports being taken over from government because I think one of the issues is that it's government teams and as such, if the government is not favoring what you are doing, then the sports will suffer. So this is probably another topic for another day, but then I think the teams are still there, but then we need to just also, you know, bring back the sponsorship, like we said, you know, in terms of the marketing team doing the right things, putting the, you know, you know the right pegs in the right holes, and I, I, I believe we're going to get there. He mentioned a very valid point. We have a lot of internationals, you know, Ine Udoka, uh, I mean, was my teammate at the national team level. He is also a very valuable tool that we can go through to get sponsorship. You know, these are guys that have tested waters around here. Olumide Oriadeji, just to mention a few. We have a lot of them. The Julius Wosus, all of them, they are still very much available. But I think there should be that inclusiveness. There should be a forum that will bring everyone together so that we can put heads together and then find a way, you know, to make this game grow. Okay. Um, because of time, let me come back to you again on, on the issue of Nile University playing in the Premier Division. The, yours is a yes. university team, and I, and I find it quite yeah. intriguing that you're playing at that level. What's the whole point of, of basketball in now? What's driving um, the, I, the, the game in now? What, what's the end goal? What do you want to achieve from this? Well, to take, to, to take, to take, the, I mean, to take uh, basketball players off the streets, that is the, base, the, that's the basic goal for all of this. Mm -hmm. uh, Weber mentioned a very key point. Back in the days, university games used to be a tough one. I think he was going head to head at some point, playing at the university level, which today we hardly find that. Uh, it is one of the driving forces why we at Nile are trying to do, just to make sure that you know the top athletes in Nigeria get an opportunity to go to school, come out with scholarships, because uh, basically it's about a scholarship program that you get to go to a school with a five million naira uh, package for a year for a period of four years. 
you know, within which if you don't graduate because you're not serious, you begin to pay after that. But then it is the reason why we're doing this so that we can, as much as possible, not just in basketball, but other sports at night, to get people off the street and then to support those who don't have the means. And even if you have the means, I am an excellent sportsman who just mirror what is happening in the U.S., where sports people get an opportunity to go to school for free. Okay. Now we're going to, we're going to try and uh, wrap this up now around this most important um, point. And that's the fact, Weber, that the big money in sports is in broadcast deals, not yeah. sponsorship. Yeah, sure. And for you to get broadcast deals, you've got to have a product that people can see is exciting to watch. Fortunately, basketball is exciting to watch. Yeah. Do you understand? Unfortunately, the MBBF can't control whether they are, they're good camera people or good editors and all of that. But, it, you know, if they can make money from it, then more companies will invest in such competencies, right? Broadcast. How do we get, you know, so I don't even know whether this is a question or just to draw the attention of most people in, in sports business to the fact that Stop planning around sponsorship. Start thinking about, about, about the broadcast media because over 60% of your revenues will come from broadcast. And if you can't take that thing that you're, you're, you're playing at one venue and put it on television or stream it live for people to see across the world, that's not business. You know, you're just talking to so, 2,000 people rather than 2 billion yeah. people. So uh, I strongly agree with you because mm. with broadcasting stations, you can reach... A wider audience mm. unlike the less than a thousand people that were packed into the arena over the weekend mm. now uh mbbf surprisingly used to do very well in this before now mm. there were there was a time when dstv was broadcasting uh, basketball across africa mm. uh, i remember i used to watch nigerian basketball uh, league in angola and there was a time also that kwesi came on board mm. okay um I don't know what led to the fallouts and um, how everything went down south, but I, again, I believe um, they should shop around to look for um, other, you know, other stations who are willing to offer uh, good deals and um, partnerships, a long-term partnership that can still give uh, rise to better funding and also uh, a lot of airtime which is most, uh, mostly very needed at this uh, point, point in time. time. What about you, um, Stanley? What do you think about, about how do we, how do we um, look, it's not even how do we get, if you, are you guaranteed that the league is going to start early next year, there's a, there's a guaranteed format and we all know the teams are going to participate and stuff like that, stuff that you can actually share with investors, business partners, and uh, broadcast networks. Do we have any such thing for next year? As to be honest, you know, that's not to put anyone down, but I think uh, it is important that we have something that is certain. You know, that we, investors can see that, yes, we have a timetable, we have a timeline for how we do our things. I think there are people who are willing to come in and, and, and put in their resources to ensure that the game goes. But we just, like I said earlier, need to put a program on ground. Because most of the time, you find out that the, the excuses that is being given why the league is not happening is because teams are complaining. They are not able to, you know, to foot bills like transportation, accommodation, and all of that. Mm. And even the officiating officials, you find out that they are not able to foot these bills for them to be able to come, you know, and officiate this game so that we can start early. So we, we need to come off that with the little one-week program that we've seen. We've seen the pool of talent that we have here in Nigeria. We can actually have, you know something close to the NBA, I'm very sure of that with the way we are. If only it can be lucrative for players to stay around, you know, within the domestic shores and then they are able to pay their bills with this same lovely game that we all enjoy. Oh, do you have a do you have a problem with players leaving like with most sports? Do you have a player with do you have a problem with your best talent leaving Nigeria as it happens with most sports in Nigeria? Yes, I mean, it's something that happened every blessed day. You know, as I speak to you, two of our players left, you know, just uh, two, three days before we got to the finals. Uh, so it's something that happens almost all the time. And this is for reasons we can actually abort if only we can put the atmosphere 
the enabling environment for everyone to go to school here, you know, and stick around and have something that he has to, you know, leave, leave on, play his best basketball. All right. All right, Stanley, it's been nice talking to you. Um, clearly, we still have to do more engagement on, 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 this, um, on this subject. I'd like Weber to have um, his last word so that we can, we can uh, call it a day. But yeah, so uh, again, I would like to use this um, opportunity to plead with the leadership of the Nigerian Basketball Federation uh, to see how we can put together a better structure within the organization and also how um, the, 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 the lifeline of the league you know, over the next couple of months, it's going to be uh, sustainable and, you know, packaged in a way that it will be attractive to investors. And um, I, I strongly believe that, you know, we can do something better than what we've had in 2024. Okay. And so, um, viewers, that's been our program for today. Basketball is clearly a very, very um, big sport. It's an exciting sport, and it's a sport in Nigeria that's wildly popular you know, across the south and the north. And what we need to do is to find a way to make this game happen. Now, to the MBBF, what I would say is this. You guys have got to get your act together and get these sports happening, because if basketball is not happening in this country, we're, like, the, uh, like Stanley says, we're going to be losing our young men and we're going to be looking, losing our best talent, all right? I can appreciate the fact that you guys have a lot to cope with, but a lot of what has to be happen has to come from you guys yourselves. Get your acts together, drop all of the egos, and let's build this game in this country. You need business managers to come in there and shape, you know, and to put up forward a roadmap of how you're going to get into the future, a roadmap that would convince sponsors and you know, investors to invest in what you're doing. You're Nigeria basketball. You, you, you are the basketball of a country of 230 million people. Anybody will listen to you. The World Bank would listen to you. IFC would listen to you if you have a plan. You know, maybe the Saudis would even listen to you. But you've got to have a plan. You, they've got to see that it's a well put together plan. There's got to be see good governance, the governance structures. They've got to see transparency, like Weber said. They've got to see everything that they see when they deal with people in other countries of the world. And basketball can become Nigerian basketball, like Stanley says, can become close to the NBA. Can be the biggest thing in Africa. You have the product. The opportunity exists. What are you going to do about it? And we're tired of all of these things that you, we hear from you people, not, you know, all of these stories. Get this thing to work. And whatever you, help you need, please go out there and hire the help and get basketball to become what it can be. And that's a major commercial success in Nigeria. Until we meet again next week, this is Mio Rufo, as I was saying. Be productive, be good, and stay safe.